Chancellor, we come to the conferment of our second honorary graduand. Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor and with great pleasure, I would like to introduce Professor Adrian Reynard. Professor Reynard has been an integral part of the global motorsport industry for over 40 years. He has developed racing cars known the world over. It all started, as you might imagine, as a young boy very interested in machines of any kind. When he was 15, he worked as a mechanic for a speed uh, record uh, person called George Brown and then Morris Motors. Then in 1970, when studying at Oxford Polytechnic, he founded the Oxford Polytechnic Automobile Club, built his own competition 250cc motorcycle, and then went on to break five world land speed records and six British national land speed records. Not content with that, the following year, he then went and broke another six world land speed records and another five national land speed records. To achieve this, and very typical of Adrian, he looked at the fundamental requirements for speed. And of course, aerodynamics came to the fore. His analysis resulted in a particularly interesting motorcycle design with a very interesting riding position. If you can imagine how one normally rides a motorcycle, it's very good for seeing where you're going, but not very good for speed. So Adrian's design had a very special feature within the frame. And this feature was just below the headstock, and it was a small hole into which he could put his head. This enabled him to get his head and body as low as possible within the frame, minimizing aerodynamic drag, which is just great for speed. Now you might wonder, how exactly does Adrian see where he's going when his head is embedded within the motorcycle looking at the ground beneath him? Well, there was a very neat solution to this, and it was to look at the line painted on the ground. And so, with rider installed on the vehicle, looking through the frame at the ground, hands up here, he then sped to victory and achieved those six world records. Following the success of his design and moving on to four wheels, in 1973, he founded Reynard Racing Cars in Bicester, having designed and built his first racing car as a student project. In 1975, uh, Adrian became an alumni of Cranfield Institute of Technology, later to become Cranfield University. At the same time, he was racing his own Reynard Formula Ford 2000 cars, which he manufactured. In 1976, Adrian was to receive a unique offer to become a Formula One chief designer for Hawk Racing Cars. This was a golden opportunity that he accepted and was where he met his future wife, Jill. In 1979, Adrian won the European Formula Four 2000 championship as a driver. At that point, he decided to hang up his helmet, albeit temporarily, to then concentrate on Reynard Racing and went on to design and build a range of Formula Three cars, conquered that championship and then went on to Formula 3000 in 1988. In 1994, he turned his attention across the Atlantic, entering the American IndyCar series. And after winning their first race, Reynard went on to win two consecutive Indy 500 events and dominated the IndyCar series for a further eight years. By the late 1990s, Reynard Racing had become one of the world's largest racing car manufacturers. But it was his interest in aerodynamics that brought him back to Cranfield's Shrivenham campus, where he pioneered new techniques to use wind tunnels for the development of racing car performance. And he was subsequently awarded a visiting chair in engineering and applied science. In 1997, he founded the Auto Research Center in Indianapolis and designed and constructed the first moving ground scale wind tunnel in the USA. This was also based on the Cranfield design and he then subsequently constructed three similar facilities, all of which are still in use today, and one of which is the Formula One Toro Rosso facility at Bicester. Also in 1997, Adrian co-founded the BAR Formula One team, designing the factory, which subsequently spawned F1 World Championships for Jensen Button in 2009, and latterly with Mercedes for Lewis Hamilton in 2014, 15, and 16, and he manages the Mercedes site to this day. As well as holding an FIE international race license, he's also a qualified pilot for both fixed wing and rotary aircraft, 
and enjoys flying tiger moths and robins and 44s, and is also a qualified yacht master. But I would particularly like to highlight Adrian's commitment to helping the next generation of motorsport engineers, many of the best of which are graduating with us here today. It was back in 1999 that Cranfield created the first MSc in motorsport engineering. Instrumental in this process was Sir Jackie Stewart, Cranfield's Clive Temple, and Professor Adrian Reynard, as well as advising on content, chairing our industrial advisory panel, lecturing and supporting student projects, Adrian also provides the much sought after Reynard Prize for the best thesis project, which he has done every year. His passion for helping students succeed in the motorsport industry is truly inspirational. The course he helped to create goes from strength to strength and is now very highly regarded within the industry. I'm sure our students here will agree with me when I remark that it is an extremely demanding course, but in being so prepares our students for what is a hugely demanding industry and an industry in which Adrian has been so successful in. And so it is with great pleasure, Chancellor, that I'm authorised by the Council and the Senate to ask you to confer on Professor Adrian Reynard the degree of Doctor of Science, Honoris Causa. I'm delighted to admit you to the degree of Doctor of Science, Honoris Causa. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chancellor. This means uh, a lot to me, Vice Chancellors. And James, thank you for those kind words. I've forgotten what I did in my life, I have to say. Um, I need especially to thank uh, the other members of the uh, motorsports team, which is uh, Clive Temple. He's been a stalwart from the beginning. He started this uh, course at the very instigation. He's a great role model, and um, together with Kim, and uh, James, we've, uh, we work together. So it's really, their, their energies and their enthusiasm is, um, it just keeps us all going and their inspiration is a perfect example of all the energies associated with motorsports. Um, I'm also pleased we've managed to embody in our course some real world learning experience um, guided by the Industry Advisory Board, um, which I've been privileged to uh, to chair for quite a few years now. Um, there'll always be a need to review the curriculum and the relevant subjects for motorsport. Motorsport really advances quickly, as all technology does these days, and we have to be very careful that we try and teach and convey ideas, not just from the past or the present, but also for the future, and uh, take a deep dive into some of the latest technical innovations um, and boy, they, they change really fast these days, and they always will. So our teaching and learning will always need to match the skill sets determined by the, motor, the future motorsport environment in, in our case. I'm, I'm also particularly big on creativity and ingenuity. Um, the word engineer is derived from the French, um, ingénieur, um, which is an ingenious person. Critical thinking, very important in our project work. Time management. We, motor racing is, is a cruel sport. It's very demanding. And um, there's no apologies for the fact that the Cranfield Motorsport MSc degree is, is a very challenging course. And I think it's renowned for being very difficult. Um, achieving goals, managing deadlines, staying within budgets, and stress, we do stress our students because that's what they've got to get used to. It's part of the, the real work job environment. Motor racing is not easy. Um, so we teach project and supply chain management. Um, we focus on individuality, relationships, but also team building, really important. Motor racing is a team sport, but we also want to develop leadership skills on the individuals and career skills as well. 
how, how, to be, how to get that best job, just like I managed to do when I was a young 24-year-old here. I also fully believe in our project philosophy, which has become a vital part of the MSC, which is learning by doing. Um, learning by doing is absorbed much better than just looking at textbooks or studying alone. And many of these relevant and essential skills, I believe, are unique to the Cranfield motorsport experience. In our Cranfield environment, we believe we pioneer high, higher education methods that best prepare you for the job market. So, yes, I was here in 1975. It was a vehicle dynamics course then. And I got a really good job offer. Um, and none of you will ever be able to match that because it was a chief designer of a Formula One team. I mean, I had no staff and I had to design the car myself. And I came here and built it in the Cranfield wind tunnel in those times. And these days, Formula One teams got a thousand people in. But in those days, it was... Uh, very different. Anyway, at the, at the time, I went to my course tutor and explained my dilemma. Do, do I continue my education here, go on for a doctorate? But uh, he surprised me by giving two pieces of advice. Firstly, he said, you're only here to get a good job. I thought that was good. And the second one I didn't expect, he said, just wait 42 years and they'll give you a doctorate anyway. <laughs> and he was right. So thank you very much, Cranfield, and congratulations to all you graduates. <laughs>